What's up everyone? This is Diana Rose. Welcome to my channel. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Come on in, come on in, come on in, beautiful people. It has been a minute since I did a live. What's up, Danny? I see Danny's already putting one in the chat. She's letting me know that she can hear me. Thank you. Come on in, come on in. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Come on in this fine Tuesday, April 2nd. What is up to all of the moderators? Hey, Linda Gamble. Hey, Cookie. Hey, Nola. I left Cookie a message on IG. So you can uh, head over there if you get an opportunity. Ma'am, I appreciate you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in, come on in. Y'all see the thumbnail? We got some things to talk about, hot topics, reviews. We got Kiki, we got Melody, we got Miss Robin Dixon. Uh, Y'all, so much have been going on these last couple of months. It is crazy to keep up with it, okay? You on uh, the internet 24 hours a day. But welcome, everyone. Come on in, come on in. Thank y'all. Um, I typically do a city shout out. So if you want to send shout out your city, you can put it on in the chat. Now I'll, I'll give you a shout out. I see 150 of you are watching. So if you're not a subscriber, become one, it's free. No problem. Just hit that subscribe button. And then also make sure you hit the like. That is how other people find me here on YouTube. Okay. So hit the like button, keep hitting that like button until the number of likes match the number of people watching and we can get started. Okay. Let's see what's, see what's going on, you guys. Um, listen, I see Chicago. Hey, 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 look, y'all coming in right now. Uh, Coconut Creek, Florida, what is up? What is up? Hey, Chicago, uh, my favorite place. I was there last year, I think in January, maybe. January, I went to uh, go to this restaurant that had a, a, a traveling chef because I really enjoy food. That is my favorite thing. So I will travel for food. And if I hear that some there's a, an amazing chef that is, uh, you know, pre premiering at a, a restaurant, I'll go. I'll go in a heartbeat if it's something that I want to eat. Hey, what is up, Doris from New Jersey? Indianapolis is in the house. H Town is in the house. What is up? What is up? Let's see who else we got. Indy, what's up? Let's see, Bishopville, South Carolina, what is up? Mississippi, hey, how are you? Hey, Cincinnati. Let's see, I've, Linda's saying hello to someone. Uh, the DMV is in the house, what's up, DMV? Texas is in the house, what is up? Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Texas, again, East Orange, New Jersey is in the building, California. I love to see where you guys are coming from, I swear. I do. It humbles me. Uh, Orange is in the house. Sorry. You, oh, no problem, honey. Not a problem at all. Houston, DMV, come on in, come on in. West Palm, come on in. Okay, y'all, we are going to talk. This is a live. Uh, we got things to chit chat about that has been in the news for a minute. I just saw something on P. Diddy that I'm going to share with you guys. Uh, Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, what is up? How are you? Thank you for joining me tonight. Louisiana, what is up? What is up? Bessema, Bessema, what is up? Okay. Um, Bessema, you should talk to me more. Send me some messages over on IG. Follow me over there at Diana Rose. I need to make sure some of the things that I be hearing about is true. Okay. What's up, Lubbock? Is that how it's pronounced? Texas? Come on in. Come on in. Hey, Pamela, how are you? Welcome over here. Uh-oh. Hey, how are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, y'all. I'm giving everybody their shout outs. I hope that you are all doing well. Um, this first quarter, second quarter, my bad, second quarter of the year. I hope you all are doing well. And we are about to get into the gossip, into the tea, into the hot topics, and into the reviews. Y'all talk to me in the comments. If you want to come up, maybe you want to come up, I'll let you come up as well. But everybody, come on in, beautiful people. It's nice to see you. 219 of you are watching right now. Go on ahead and hit that like button for me, please. And thank you. I appreciate it. That's how others find me here on YouTube. Let me make sure that my numbers are right. If I'm looking at this properly, 127 of you have hit the like button. So keep hitting that like button, okay? 
Thank you very much. And anybody that you see with a purple wrench behind their name, they are here to make sure that you have a good time in the chat. I'm okay with whatever you say. We have different thoughts and opinions, and I like to hear different thoughts and opinions. That's what keeps us moving, okay? We hear the same thing all the time. It won't take long for us to go crazy, okay? But So it's okay to have a different opinion. Just be respectful. Don't call anybody out their name. Don't say anything, you know, ignorant about people. That's all I ask. Y'all Y'all are grown, so be grown in the chat, okay? That's pretty much it. Um, so let's get it started. We're going to get talking. Let me let me take this down. OK, hold on one second. Let's see if I'm OK. I think my camera is a little fuzzy and I don't like it, but I'll, I'll keep it up for a second or keep the, the banner down. And then speaking of banners, let me go ahead and put up mine. Uh, this is a discussion about reality TV and pop culture. It is for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so we're all going to chit chat. This is a kitchen table conversation, basically. Things that you would talk about with your friends and family at home. We're just going to do it right here on YouTube. All comments and opinion are alleged. Okay, um, so it is not meant to offend anybody, uh, but we're talking about it. If it's on social media, we're talking about it. Okay, um, so keep coming in. Uh oh, let's see. I've noticed I don't get my notices. Uh oh. Let me see. I'm going to post this. Uh, Samer said, I noticed I don't get my notices from black content creators, but the few white channels that she gets, she gets notices all the time. I don't have to keep pressing that button. Uh, I'm sorry that you don't get the notices really, because I hear that all the time. There was a whole like um, thread, maybe two videos ago where people were saying, I have no idea why I'm not getting your notices. I don't either. You guys, I have been like, you know, I'll get on the phone or will message um, YouTube and ask what's going on, but they swear it's not a problem. But I appreciate all of you who show up for me anyway, and just make sure that your notifications are on. Um, I have been doing videos every day. Um, and I'm trying to come live more and all that good stuff for y'all. So um, yeah, I have not abandoned y'all. So don't abandon me. Okay. Just keep paying attention to my channel and I'll get a little more regular. So y'all know when my uh, videos are, are dropping. Thank you, Linda Gamble, for posting 158 likes, 279 in the chat. So make sure that y'all hit that uh, like button for me if you are in the chat, okay? Um, oh no, it's not there. Okay. Um, let me see. So when you go to, I don't know what type of phone you have. I'm actually on an Apple computer. Let me see if I can look at it on my phone cookie. Cookie is trying to, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Um, it may be different because people tell me that it's different from for uh, iPhone users versus you, uh, excuse me, iPhone versus Android. I think that's what they say. Hmm. Cookie was trying to hook some people up if someone has an iPhone in the chat, because I haven't done this before, but if someone has an iPhone in the chat and you know how to, um, you know how you um, give a a super chat, like you, um, you'll you do a super chat or something like that, and then it will allow you to, oh, it's, it certainly doesn't. It'll allow you to gift memberships. If you guys know how to do that from an from an iPhone, can you please put the directions or instructions in the chat? I thought I had it right, but I think that might just have been for Android. When I actually looked it up, it gave it for Android maybe and not for iPhone. I'm not for sure why. That's crazy. Anyway, if you guys can help her out because she's really trying to hook a couple of members up, hook some people up with memberships, I should say, so that we can help you guys out. Um, Indigo Girl said that she doesn't get notifications either. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. So we're going to be on live for a little bit. So if you guys have instructions for how to do it, if you've done it on another channel, drop it into the chat. Um, and then I don't know, maybe Miss Nola. Nola, if you can look for directions for how to gift memberships on YouTube on iPhone. I think Cookie may have an iPhone. That's why she's not able to see it. Um, if you could put that in the chat for her, because she said she told me last week that she wanted to do that for uh, some of the channel members. And so um, that is such a blessing to have someone donate and gift. So I want to make sure that um, somebody can be blessed 
this evening since I am on live. Okay. And we'll see if we can get that hooked up. All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about this one right here first, child. Check it out. Diddy. This has to do with P. Diddy and those raids and everything that's been going on with him. A lot of people are super sensitive right now about what's happening. We saw, I think it was just last week, his sons, two of his sons get taken out of his home. One of his homes, I think it may have been the one in Miami. Um, he had two homes raided, one in Miami, one in Florida, but he had two of his sons inside of his house and they were handcuffed and walked out of his home uh, while they went in and basically pulled video, uh, took all of his electronics, the security system, everything that they had video for, they were looking for um, information on it and um, or information on him. And what they were basically saying was the trafficking um, allegations. So we know that Cassie, an ex-girlfriend, a longtime ex-girlfriend of his, who's now married with children, she came out late last year and said, listen, all of these things happened to me. First, she went to him directly, though. She went to him directly first and said, listen, this is my pain. I want to be paid for it. <laughs> this is my pain. I want to be paid for it. These are the things you've done to me. Um, you know, she said she needed psychological help, but she said, I do want to get paid. I have left this relationship um, and I had some time to think now that I'm not, I haven't been around you. I've had some time to think about all of the horrible, rotten, dirty, nasty ass things that you did to me. And, you know, life is short. And a lot of people were saying it's a money grab, but she said, listen, these things that I feel, the stuff that goes on in my head, I still have to be a mother. I still have to be a wife. I still have to be a friend, a daughter to all of these things, but these still things are still racing in my head. And right now I'm going to need a little something to help me forget. I want to be on an island <laughs> this point around. I want to buy something. You get to live your life and, and be as, you know, have a, a, an amazing time wherever you want. And I am left with these memories and you're still torturing me. You're still taunting me, you know, sending me little message on IG, making people think that we got something. We have nothing. Um, and she asked for, I believe, um, I think they said it was something like, was it 30 million? It was something like that. Anyway, he said no. He said no. And he called her bluff. He didn't think that she would take any of the allegations she was accusing him of uh, anywhere. Um, and she did. She left his house and went right on down to the courthouse uh, in New York. And she filed on the last day of the Adult Survivors Act. That's when she made that filing. So um, she went down there with her lawyer. They called the New York Times and said, go check this out. And after that, <laughs> uh, P. Diddy and the corporations that he worked for, uh, they made a settlement because she had his name along with the companies that he worked for. Perhaps he doesn't have the money she's asking for. Maybe he can't just pull it out of a bank account. But you know who does? The businesses. And the businesses are going to want this to go away immediately. But it was too late. It was already all over. It was all over every place. And now all of this stuff has come out. But just a little bit ago before I went live, I saw this basically saying that authorities have been investigating P. Diddy for a long time for trafficking. Okay. So they said that this case was so top secret that some of the agents didn't even know they were raiding his home until they got there. They wanted to make sure that no one knew. And if y'all remember when Cassie had went and filed, uh, the police department, the New York police department made a statement and said, we are now investigating. And the very next day they retracted it. They retracted it immediately and said it was a mistake. And I have to assume it was because the feds or Homeland Security, whatever they're labeled, gave them a call and said, uh, y'all, y'all need to ease up off the pressure. This is our case. Okay. So, um, Wow. That is crazy. What? Samra said herpes for over 25 years or more. Are you saying that someone has herpes, child? Oh my goodness. Um, I'm sure there was all kinds of bodily fluids and things that was going around. Uh, Crystal said, Diana, have you heard of Kanye West being sued? Yes, ma'am. I put it over on my IG page. 
his someone from a, the school that he worked for um, basically said that uh, they are suing him for a lot of um, crazy behavior, including um, they said that he almost pleasured himself out in public. So that is wild. Um that is so crazy. Cookie, I'm not sure what happened. Um we're still we're still looking. I, I have someone looking it up and, and hopefully they'll get it into the comment section soon. So Cookie is still trying to figure out how to gift some people memberships for my my uh my my back channel. Um 14, whatever the age is now. So the other thing that came out about P. Diddy is that his son, they're saying that they now have pictures of some um of the abuse allegations. He's also been accused of abuse. I believe that this was Christian. Christian, uh, the one that looks actually very much like him. Um, they said that Christian is also in deep trouble. He was a part of the Rodney Jones filing. His name was listed as uh, a person who has also done some things with underage girls and um, participated in some of the, the F off parties. Um, and now authorities are saying that they have pictures and that they will be releasing those pictures this week for Pete's sake. Um, by the way, both of the sons that were taken out in handcuffs are over the age of 20. I think they're like mid 20s right now. So it is very sad. I agree with you, Miss Wynn. It is very sad. Um, I know that uh, Justin's mother, I think her name is Misa, uh, she came out today and she was very heartbroken about her son being taken out by Homeland Security. And she said that she doesn't believe that this would have happened um, with anyone except a, a young Black man. She said that if it was another person's child, if it was the Kardashians, okay, if it was Rob, y'all wouldn't have pulled him out of the house like that, uh, basically is what she was saying. And she felt really, um, she, she was hurting and letting people know that she uh, did not appreciate them doing that to her son. So anyway, I thought that this was a crazy story, y'all. And I wanted to just keep you up to date. A lot of people, again, have been saying, you know, he's He's innocent until proven guilty. And we also know that the court filing um, made by Rodney Jones has been amended three times already in less than a month. Three times that man has pulled names out, put more names in, put pictures in, all these other things. Um, a lot of people have been saying, that's not me. I'm not sure who he's talking about. There was an actual porn star who came out and said, the video that you're saying is Stevie J is actually me. This is the name of the video. I'm not sure how I got in it. Okay, I don't know these people. Um, so who knows how, how this is going to play out. But right now, the cases that are in court are both civil cases, which means they are looking for um, some sort of financial settlement, financial reward. Um, but the civil cases has also triggered a criminal case. But as you can see what I just posted, uh, the feds are saying they've been investigating this for a long time now, that it wasn't from the court cases. I guess they just thought the time was right. So who knows? So yes, um, Christian is the other son. Misa's son is named Justin. I think that was his first son. Because remember, he named his restaurant Justin. Um, so that's crazy. Uh, those boys have been groomed by their father. Uh, this is so sad for them. Seemingly their future is bleak. It is heartbreaking, I have to say. It is heartbreaking. Um, so sad, especially when the son had a chance to have an Ivy League education only to have this blight on his character, 100% child. Um, when it first happened, that was the first thing I thought about was his mama. I was like, I can't even imagine what has to be going through her head to see her son pulled out of the house like that. That is absolutely terrifying. Like to think how afraid he must have been. And also he probably thought he was safe doing what he was doing with his father. Like you said, he's been doing it for so long. Nobody's ever interrupted it. And it could have gone on forever if it wasn't for the civil suits coming out. Who knows when the feds make their move? They they will hold on to information, have all the information in the world to, to go after a person, to, to bring them to justice right then and there. They're going to wait until after these cases. And the man is almost old and gray. Hell. That's pretty crazy. Uh, Justin ain't even Diddy. Some with me. So, oh, he's not. 
I didn't know that. It was with another man. They called him Wolf. He just looks, wow, child, I did not know that. You done schooled me on something today. Um, I thought that was his baby. Um, 277 of you are watching. Please hit that like button for me, please, please. And thank you. Thank you, Linda, for uh, hooking me up with the numbers. Um, uh, you said, okay, Danny said, I hope the victims are okay. Heartbreaking. Um, and I agree with you there too. The victims are really the main ones and y'all there is right now, I forgot to even say this right now, there is an actual, um, what do you call it? Um, what do you call like the, uh, the civil suits when a whole bunch of people join in on it? There's a law firm that's saying, if you are a sexual uh, assault victim of P. Diddy, give us a call. They're looking to bring like a broader suit against him with multiple victims. So um, a class actions lawsuit, is that what it's called? Anyway, they are now posting that at a legal office based. Yeah, a class action. They are posting that at um, on one of the legal firms with his face and said, please give us your name, your number, your everything, child. They are asking for victims all over to step in and be a part of it. They are looking to bring him all the way down at this point. So those are the two things that came out today. Um, let's see, Cookie said, it's amazing how black, how wealthy black children suffer for the sins of their father. Whew, child, sins the sins of their father. So that's what I wanted to bring to y'all. I just wanted y'all to see it, child. Um, I was trying to, you know, hold out to see what was going to happen next. But now that the feds have come out and said, listen, um, this has been ongoing for many, 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 many moons. Um, and we're, we basically got the information we need. We just came to collect those, um, those videos and probably to protect some people that, you know, sometimes people make the call, they wait. I know people don't want to believe that, but people make a call and say, now's the time, child. We got other things going on and we need people to be focused on this and not on this. And they'll do it in a heartbeat. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 520 of you are watching. Make sure that you hit that like button, please. And thank you. Okay. That's how others find me over here. 300 of you have hit the like button, but 226 of you have not. So keep hitting that like button. Okay. Uh, I heard something super cute today. Uh, Y'all can stay up there in the mountains if you want to, but you're going to have to hit that like button. Okay. Go ahead. Stay in the mountains, stay in the, stay in the valley, stay wherever you want to stay. Just hit the like button, put your finger on it real quick and continue to watch. Okay. Um, let's see. Allegedly, Justin and Kristen are on those tapes. Yep. That's what I heard too. That's what I heard too. Like I said, um, they already released earlier today that they were going to release the pictures with Justin. They were going to release the picture no, with Christian, Christian, I think, release the pictures with Christian. Too much, too much. I'm trying to subscribe to the channel for my Android. It won't let me watch him from Barbados. Thank you for watching from Barbados. I don't know what is going on with my channel, but I appreciate your support. Keep trying to hit the like button and subscribe to me, okay? I appreciate y'all. Um, Let's see. The mountains are a new one. Yeah, that's not mine. That belongs to who knew? Because when she said it, child, I was listening to her. I was cooking and, and listening to her video. And when I tell you I stopped everything so I could howl, that shit was hilarious. Um, anyway, I used it. <laughs> I was like, that is the cutest thing. Um, Justin is definitely Diddy's biological. Okay. Uh, that was proven in Mises child support suit. He's just, oh, okay. So uh, Bad Apple said, um, that's not the case. That that baby is his. So Justin, who is the lighter complected one, I think he went to a school in California, a big school in California for football. Y'all remember P. Diddy was at the football game or practice. He didn't like what the coach called and he took a and hit the coach with it, swung it, hit him with it. Um, and we never heard anything more from the coach. Later that day, P. Diddy made a statement saying, I just, you know, got the best of me, you know, it's not that bad. It's not as bad as you think. And then the coach never said anything. Clearly there was a quick payoff. Um, I think it was, um, if y'all remember which school that was, um, but they, they didn't say another word about it. And that was maybe, maybe three years ago, okay? Maybe three years ago, but hit him with a kettlebell. That's right, UCLA. 
hit him with a kettlebell. That was crazy to me. Uh, 561 of you are watching. Go on ahead and keep hitting that. Keep hitting that like button, okay? Uh, wasn't it rumored that he really belonged? Uh-oh. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I can say that Misa is the one who's always talking about um, P. Diddy and what was going on. And I feel like it was just last year her son had got picked up for a DUI and she was online like, yap, yap, yap. And she was like, I'm not going to let you do this to mine. I will effing tell everything. I don't know who you think you messing with. That's my child. Like she was going off. And I was like, oh, where's this coming from? Because typically the baby mamas seem to be like they're in a, they're in line. Mother's Day, he's always sending them all the same gifts and they're posting it and it's a whole thing and it's been happening for years. And that's the first time I ever saw her step out and speak against him uh, the way she did. I, I've not heard that before. Um, I think there's another one named Peaches or something. Anyway, thank you, Cookie. I appreciate you. Um, let's see, that blunt force, force for show, for sure. Um, again, we didn't hear anything more. I just remember him them announcing the kettlebell and I remember thinking, who gets hit with a kettlebell? What is going on over there? It could but have been the pink stuff. According to those documents, he likes to mix mix some things, okay? Allegedly. Um, you have to hit it three times because it keeps going away. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. Sometimes, y'all, um, I keep saying this. YouTube is a political platform, y'all. Sometimes people can make phone calls and get things done, child, to make your channel uh, sink so that they, they can rise. I know people don't like to hear that, but it's true. It's true. Uh, people have been on YouTube for a long time. They'll tell you. They'll do things to people's channel to sabotage it, unfortunately. Don't know why, but it happens. Um, anyway, that was one of the stories. Let's get on to the next, okay? Uh, let's talk about this one right here. I told y'all I was over there on Who News Channel, child. Uh, she had um, posted some stuff. I was like, let me check what the hell is going on. And the conversation was about Kiki, child. More videos and audio has dropped on from Kiki. About Kiki, you can hear Kiki in the background. I don't know if this is, in fact, I shouldn't even say I don't know. This isn't helpful. <laughs> it's not helpful to Kiki at all. In fact, it is crazy. It is crazy. Um, there has been reports that she is filming for the upcoming season, which should be season seven, I believe. And there has been reports that she's not filming. Someone said that she was actually on the yacht that um, for the girls trip that we saw not too uh, long ago. Uh, so I said, <laughs> Nola said, what does she do now? Well, baby, it's an old story. Okay, let's start there. It's an old story all about Marceau cheating. I think that if Jesus Christ came down from the sky and administered a lie detector test on Marceau, um, I think that we would all feel like, um, yeah, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate you. Um, I think we would all feel like uh, Marceau, uh, that Jesus Christ is a damn lie. Okay, Marceau is definitely a cheater. I don't. I don't think that there's anything that anyone can say to make us believe otherwise, okay? Allegedly, in my opinion. Let's start there. Um, but y'all know all of the crazy stuff that went on last year that got Kiki kind of, you know, in trouble. I won't even say kind of, got her in trouble, child. Got her in trouble with a whole lot of folks. Um, but last year, uh, Kiki was talking about or talking to a guy named Bugs. Bugs, Bugs the damn barber. And I don't know if she knew this gentleman well. It sounds like she didn't. It sounds like, um, I think it was Kimmy's makeup artist. Kimmy's makeup artist's name was Tasha. Tasha got fired for allegedly spreading a rumor about Marceau having an affair with Tisha's makeup artist, Jasmine. Okay, that's what I, I believe it was. Um, Kiki brought it to the show. It was online. There was some stuff that dropped online about it. I believe it was on Twitter. Um, and then Kiki said that Tisha came to her and said, hey, girl, I heard that your makeup artist is involved too. 
and I want you to fire her. Okay. This all came out with Kiki, Anthony, and I don't know who else. I feel like it was one other person, but it doesn't matter. Maybe it was just Bugs. Okay. Uh, Cookie said, Bugs has been quiet as a church mouse. He certainly has. He is cutting hair and minding his business. However, <laughs> however, too late, <laughs> too late. Um, they all came out. They said it. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, per perfectly natural. Perfectly natural me said, I stay in the bushes, just popping out to say, I love your channel. I appreciate you, boo. Thank you. Come on, come on. I need more people to come on and love my channel. 617 of you are watching, but let me catch y'all up. So Tasha was the person who got let go. Uh, from what I'm understanding, the makeup artists were paid by own network. So uh, that's a nice little thing. You know, the the, the cast get to, the, the women on the cast get to bring a makeup artist on and then um, own pays for it. If y'all remember um, on the We Network, the Braxtons, the Braxtons, Black royalty of the United States of a Black America, um, they said that they weren't getting their hair and makeup paid for. And that was one of the things they were asking for. Like, if y'all want us to do another season, this is what we need from We. And we said, no, y'all can pay for it yourself. And so they were flipping out trying to, you know, make some changes over there and, you know, you know how that show ended up off the air. <laughs> but anyways, Own is paying for the makeup. I, I don't guess hair, uh, maybe hair too. I think the hair stylist and the makeup artist um, are paid from Own. But it doesn't matter. Own just did an investigation. They fired Tasha. Uh, sounds like Tasha may have had um, a relationship with with uh, Jasmine's boyfriend at the time, Bugs. So he was doing both of them. Um, and... Kiki said that Tisha came to her and said, listen, girl, this is what's happening. I need you to fire your makeup artist. Um, and Kiki said, let me find out what's going on and then I'll get back with you. That's the story she told. Um, and then she kind of switched it up and said, she asked me to investigate it. Okay. Either way, whether she asked her to investigate or, or said, just find your makeup artist or fire your makeup artist. I want to find, um, fire your makeup artist because I, I think it's, not cool that she's spreading these rumors. What ended up coming out in the phone call was a little different, a little different. And it actually made her look like she was sneaking to get some information on Marceau. That's what it felt like. Um, like I say, it doesn't matter at this point. Nobody's going to believe that Marceau's not cheating. Nobody, nobody. But um, Kiki starts the call with saying something about I guess she gave Anthony permission to take the phone call, take the phone call between her and her makeup artist and also Tasha, which would be Kimmy's makeup artist. Um, and they didn't know they were being taped. So she gave them permission to do it allegedly. And they didn't know that they were being taped. That's obvious. They were saying all kinds of things. And if they knew, they probably wouldn't have done it. That's number one. Number two, you can tell that Kiki's makeup artist really liked Kiki, like thought of her as a friend, probably thought she was a cool boss. She was feeling a little insecure about what was going on. She was like, I, I didn't get invited to um, the, the reunion uh, to do your hair and makeup or do your makeup. I don't know what's going on. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry, girl. You know, I didn't have the money to pay for you. Or I would have brought you. And she was like, if you would have asked me, I would have I would have found a way to get there myself. So even that, I was like, oh, that's just too bad. Because you can tell that she had been let go and she just didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, but it just, at the end of the day, it made, with everything else that we already know about the call, it made Kiki look like she was a bad, she was a bad cousin, bad family, a bad friend, because the ladies that she was talking to was talking to her because they trusted her. And a bad boss because that was someone that you hired or asked to be hired for you. So at the end of the day, child, I don't know. I just thought it was crazy. Uh, Danny said, I'm just going to sit here and eat my food until the next topic, child. I don't care. Um, I hear what y'all are saying, but I also think that Kiki and what was going on with her didn't start with him. It started with several people then him and then several other people were involved too if you if you look at the whole 
platform of how those stories were getting around and how people were talking, um, it, it, it came from a lot of people, a lot of sources were involved. A lot of sources were involved. Um, Own did an investigation on the makeup artist, but didn't, but not Melody. Hmm. Well, the police needed to do a, an investigation on Melody's uh, revenge pee. That's where that should have come from. If I'm an employer and you and your husband did something outside of this show, it wasn't like it was you know, on the show, it was outside of the show. That's, that's where that has to go. And it sounds where it has gone to the police. <laughs> that's where it should start. Absolutely. Um, and, and hopefully, um, you know, everything will happen the way it's supposed to happen there because it, it was wrong for him to do that. And we know it's a crime in Alabama. And I think it's great that Melody got whatever she needed to go on down to the police station and say, it's time, it's time. So thumbs up to her. Cause a lot of times, sometimes that stuff happened and you, you can be so used to a back and forth of BS between you and your ex that you don't, you may not even, it may not even click for you that this is, this is actually criminal. Like what you're doing to me is criminal because you're used to the back and forth, number one. And you're also used to be in a protection mode, especially if you have children, you want to protect your kids. So I'm happy that she found what she needed to move forward. Always try to look at the positive side of things. Okay. Um, yep. She got herself into a world of mess. And that's what I said. I was like, at the end of it all, this, what I bought into with Kiki is that she was living out a dream of hers. Like in real time, we are watching someone who said, I want to be on television. These are the things I want to do with my life. Um, you know, I had this setback and I'm, you know, trying to get over that hump still because that's something she'll try to, she'll have to work on forever. But she had this setback and she said, this is what I wanted to do. And watching her live it out, I thought was amazing. But to see it crash and burn so quickly, so quickly, it was a lot. Um, uh, let's see. You're right. However, she stated the CK shindig that he has a therapist and security on set on should have been ex Melody Cherie's ex-husband. We'll see what's going to happen. I don't believe that the show is going to continue um, because I don't think that people actually like it anymore. I think that the, the stories that are told off the show, because a lot of the stuff don't make it to the show, um, including the revenge P that's never been discussed on the show. It has been discussed off the show. It has been discussed by Martell's um, baby mama. It's been discussed by bloggers. It has never been discussed on the show by Melody Martell, Melody's mother, um, or any of the other cast members. And so I think the security piece I had heard on I think it was Love and Marriage DC. Um, Love and Marriage DC says that they had asked for security for a scene. And then I forgot her name. I think it may be Winter. She said that anybody on a Carlos King set can ask for security at any time and they will have them scheduled for an event. So security is actually offered to everybody on set. Um, maybe they don't know that they, they could have security, but it is not a one-time deal. Um, they asked for security for a party that they had on Love and Marriage DC, and she actually said that they could have it for anyone. Um, and I think the same thing was said of Married to Medicine when I was listening. They said that they had a psychiatrist on set, and they said that that is standard. Actually, yeah, that's where I heard it. That's standard to have a psychiatrist on set now, and it's standard to have security on set. So, um, I mean, it's I like to hear all the other things because sometimes we can hear stuff and be like, whoo, is this real? Did this really happen? But when you hear that it is with everybody, then it, it's a little different. But I do believe that because that was not on the show and now that Melody has taken the steps and shared with her fans, I have taken the steps to do this. Um, I think that it has brought at least it will bring some closure. I don't know if it actually went to court yet or if it's, you know, I think it was due to go to court according to that Sun article. If that was accurate, then it should be resolved soon 
if it didn't happen last month, this month, it should be resolved. That's what it was saying. But you know, court cases always gets pushed back sometimes. Either way, I'm happy that she has found what she needed to move forward. And I'm going to say this too. Um, you know, Martel didn't do himself any favors when he was on that Tasha K channel, um, making the comments about how he doesn't find anything wrong with whooping his children and things like that. I don't think any there's, that's a problem. If you've been asked not to do it, and if you, according to the records, if you've been asked not to do it and to also go to therapy, saying that type of stuff on public platforms for everyone to hear, it is not a problem. And this is what I did. I whooped them and blah, blah, blah. That's the wrong thing to do. So it's, you know, you got to let people talk, talk and tell on themselves and then we'll see how it plays out. It could definitely go to court. Um, I feel like Melody may honestly leave now. She could. I mean, this platform, I'll say this and then I'm going to wrap it up for her. Um, this platform is her platform. It's pretty much been centered around her. Um, at the end of the day, the show changed when Martel changed the show because it was Martel who changed the show at the end of the day. Um, him cheating on his wife on the show while they were both on the show cheating and having a baby on his wife um, after his wife had a baby was such a big and um, you know scandalous event that it changed the dynamics of the show from what they had before. Um, could Melody and Martel have been on the show and gotten divorced and just moved on into another part of their life? Absolutely. I think that they could have done that and still it could have been about some of the business things that people keep asking for and about the friendships and relationships. But once it did that and that scandal happened, it created a, a platform for everything to be scandal. Um, but I think that Martel is the one who messed up that show. He made it nasty. He made it nasty. Um, I, I know he probably thinks he gets all the blame for stuff, but he did it. He did it, okay? Um, so instead, I think it goes to court. Okay. Um, I know from what I read, it was either this month or, excuse me, last month or this month. But either way, um, it's it's a done deal. Not done. I can't speak for own, so I, I, can't, I can't help with that. What I do think is that the show at this point, it is what it is. And it's a what it's a matter of if people are watching it or not watching it. The stuff that we see on the show is nothing. It's not even a tenth of what we talk about online. We have a whole nother show going on, on online about this stuff, and it is it is um, depressing a lot of times. Let's see. I said the same thing. Martel did himself no favors. He did not. He did not do himself any favors. That interview alone, that's that's court worthy. The interview is court worthy. Okay. But um anyway, the the uh, show is can be depressing. And I, I think that he he ruined the show with that and you know, yelling out 20 baby or you got 20 women and all of that stuff. He made it the ugly thing. Him saying, I'm taking you to court for full custody. All of those things, those are the things that I remember where I was sitting on my couch in my house. <laughs> I'm sitting on my couch in my house with my hands over my mouth, watching and rewinding and watching and rewinding and thinking, what the f am I watching? What is this? And they were always moments with Martel, period. That's that's what I see. Um, and it's, it's shocking to me. It's shocking to me. Um, and I would always think, okay, well, who's coming back? Who's not coming back? They keep signing up to return for this show. Every single one of them have signed up to return to the show. From what I understand, Destiny left on her own. Who else left on their own? Tiffany left on their own. Um, I'm not sure about Kiki yet. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, we'll have to see. I, I would actually like to hear from Kiki. I think that she deserves to share a story. But if her story, if she's been talking and it's any different from what just got released, that's not going to work. But I still think that she has a right to share something. Um, that's probably why he's been so quiet. Listen, Melody has been 
very happy. I, I've been watching her stories and thinking, Ooh, she got an extra pep in her step. <laughs> she got some extra pep in her step. She about to do this, you know, the united prayer with the group and um, the fast, excuse me. So I'm, I'm interested in seeing what happens. Um, Martel definitely changed. If he had decided to co-parent and just move forward, right. And even then, I'm going to be honest, even then when all of that stuff had come out, if y'all remember when they came back for a season, Melody and Martel sit down to co-parent. Let's do this. Let's let's try to be okay, right? Um, and still, it was him who messed it up. It was him who messed it up every single time, every single time. Um, uh, look, Simone said Destiny left on her own. Wait, Destiny left on her own. From what I'm understanding, child, she packed her bags and said, it's time for me to go, which is why I find it so interesting that she's returning because I could pick up Destiny's energy when she was really just not in a good place, blaming the show, blaming the fans, blaming Melody, your star, she got to be the star of the show, all the stuff that was coming out. It was just like, oh, girl. And you know, sometimes you can just tell when people are not in a good place here. And listen, we all have that journey every once in a while. And I kept saying, you know, she's going to look back on this one day and she's going to see that she just was coming up out of her skin. She was coming up out of character and she didn't have to, but she had some other things that was on her shoulders. And she believed it was everybody else's fault for not following her lead or doing what she wanted them to do. And it came across as jeale jealousy and bitterness and anger every single time and we haven't seen her any better period she did that show interview with um i forgot the the interview she did where she was talking about um moses is it called future wifey i think it's called future wifey anyway my guess not even being there, but my guess was that the girl's trip was about them healing whatever their issues were since they all were brought together, if that's the case. Uh, it also feels like maybe they were all asked to bring a plus one because they're going to be on this island and you probably would want to, you know, wind down with people that love you for real in real life, have fun with people who love you in real life. Um, as opposed to just, you know, being in that confined space with those people every single solitary second of the day. So they got to bring a plus one. Melody brought her people. Um, you know, Kimmy and Tisha are Kimmy and Tisha. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Um, the show is about conflict and resolution at the end of the day. That's what most reality shows are about. Um, I like Kiki. I hope they brought her back for season seven. Uh, she was way better than Dustin. Ain't that the truth? Uh, my last comment was deleted somehow. I don't know who's deleting comments, boo. Wasn't me. Um, come on in, everybody. 869 of you are watching. Make sure that you hit the like button on your way in, okay? Dear future wifey, yes, I I, I remember that at the last minute. Um, Dusty got fired. Ooh, Dusty. Dusty got fired. But CK is so messy, he wants her to come back, and they're uh, saying she's quick. Now, I thought she got fired, too, just based on the conversation that was had at the reunion. He said on the stage, girl, the producer said, uh, they have a hard time with you, getting you to talk, getting you to tell stories. Y'all remember that one scene she had with Tisha where they were at a restaurant, and she was talking about how she cooks for Moses. And I remember thinking, I'd rather watch eggs boil, baby. This is crazy. I don't care about you cooking for for uh, Moses. Hell, we don't see you cook for yourself. We haven't seen you cook for the baby. We don't know anything about you in your life. And I don't want to hear this. That man lives in St. Louis. You live in Huntsville. So let's start there. Um, and also he hasn't been on the show, but when she said, when he said all that, that the producer said she's difficult. And then Kimmy, who let Marie sit beside her and said, well, I get ass shots on my phone. Is that cheating? Oh, I guess I'm cheating in. And she had to sit and, and pray on how not to punch him in the mouth. She tells Destiny in her angst, because she's mad at her husband. She ends up saying, Destiny, I can't do it anymore. I cannot be in scenes with you where producers are saying, make her, I'm out. I thought that was crazy too. And Destiny just clammed up and stopped talking. But she had a whole lot of mouth for meal on that scene. 
whole lot of mouth. Um, oops, sorry about that. Um, so anyway, we'll get to see. My guess is that she hasn't been away from the show long enough uh, not to be um, to be healed. You know what I'm saying? Like we all have had experiences in our own family dynamics where you can be away from somebody and be a completely different person. Then you go back into that family dynamic and you will return to the same old person. You go back to the same old person. We saw that with Candy in her group, um, Escape, when she was crying and stuff, talking about, y'all don't respect me, child. They respect you just fine. It's just you don't know how to be you within the group, okay? You still have all of that old pent-up anger and energy and bad feelings, um, but you got to learn how to be you the new you, the you that have overcome when you get back into the dynamics. Okay. So that was one thing I wanted to talk about. So I, sh I did, I shared it. I shared it. Um, who else are we talking about? I don't know if y'all can hear that thunder. So I don't know how long I'm going to stay on here. I'll try, but I'm not, I don't like to be on stuff when it's thundering. Anyway, let's talk about NECA and Giselle real quick, because these two have made some interesting comments about being harassed by the fans of RHOP. Um, NECA said that people came after her and she said it was not fair for her first season. She felt like she was raked through the coals, right? Um, we've heard this before with um, Tiffany saying that she received death threats her first season after Destiny had came after her and made it seem like, you know, um, she had done something to her and made her feel bad. And people who really liked Destiny, people liked Destiny. People loved Destiny, in fact. Um, those first couple of seasons when she presented herself as Melody's good friend who was willing to stand up and, you know, sock it to Martell when he was being ignorant. Well, when Destiny was saying, I'm hurt, Melody, you know, you're not the same friend to me. And are you taking up for Tiffany? Tiffany says she got death threats that first season. She said it was real hard for her and it didn't get better. People came after her until she said, you know what? Right now I'm in a place where I am suffering from postpartum depression and I can't take the comments too. So I got to go. Um, <laughs> um, right now, nobody likes Destiny. I'm talking about those first couple of seasons. People did like her. I always side eyed her because I was like, oh, there's something wrong. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. I mean, I thought she was very pretty. I just didn't. I don't know. She wasn't willing to share a story. And when she did that shit to Tiffany, I actually didn't like that at all. I thought they were being too crazy. Um, but NECA said that her first season of RHOP, she said it went really bad and she's gotten a lot of crazy comments. And if you guys watch the reunion, uh, even if you watch season eight show for RHOP, um, Giselle is standing on the fact that she received um, death threats and that her children even received death threats. And she said it was all because of Candace. And she said, because of that, I will never forgive that girl. I will never forgive her. This is a problem for me. Um, I don't, and I don't want to have anything to do with her. I will never talk to her. We are done. Now, Giselle and Candace used to be big sis, little sis, right? See, Simone, you did like her. So I had to get something to drink. You did like her. Um, Lisa Love said, I don't, I don't get people receiving is reality TV that serious. Well, honey, that's what I wanted to talk about, Lisa Love Child, because I have heard this quite a bit and I think it's so crazy. Um I totally get that we relate to the people that we see on screen. Um, but y'all got to remember, those people are living a really different life from ours, child. They are um, getting paid. Let's start there. <laughs> they're getting paid to interact with each other. They may not like the interaction, but they're getting paid for it. That's number one. Number two, uh, the th I think three months may go by sometimes before the season actually premieres. And then they go on tour and talk about what happened to them. And when they're talking about it, they are also telling us their businesses. Uh, you know, I got this, uh, I think um, the new business with Sweet Tea, she was letting us know she had three new businesses, child. Um, a, a, a new tea company, or she's selling tea. She's selling t-shirts and she has a um, nonprofit organization. And I literally said, when I saw it, I said, good for her. She absolutely, uh-oh, uh, Cookie said, uh, Giselle is lying as usual. Everyone loves her children. Yeah, them children are beautiful, child. I love those kiddos. 
um, but she sucks. She she is a strong personality on the show. Um, but anyway, I was saying about Sweet Tea, I love the fact that she was capitalizing. Girl, she she was a little slow on the draw with the Dennis Semenis shirt, though. She let Heavenly beat her to the punch. Um, so she said it. And then two days later, Heavenly was wearing that shirt at the dentist's office. Talk about baby. Uh, my son is, is here. To, oh, he's in training. My, my uh, nephew's in training. Uh, her niece is a lawyer. She was letting us know. It's on over here. You were slow when you called me Dennis and Menace. You should have been wearing that damn shirt the day it happened. But either way, they are profiting. Now, if y'all have these problems at your job and you go to Human Resources and complain about it, I don't know how many of y'all can create a T-shirt and be walking around the office saying that moon pie face bitch in the uh, mail room. Um, I don't like her. <laughs> Buy my T-shirt. <laughs> I don't think that anybody could do that. I don't think y'all could go on tour on YouTube in the in the likes and talk about it uh, while promoting things. I don't think that you could do that. I think those will all be against your employment and you would find yourself on the employment line immediately. So let's keep that in mind when we are watching these shows that, um, yes, they may be going through some things and they may have to work some things out, child. Um, but we don't have it like them. We do not have it like them. Um, in our real life, if we got into a fight with somebody at the job, okay, if we got into an argument with somebody at the job, we go complain, human resource is going to make you sign off on a piece of paper say don't have this conversation with nobody else. We are going to do an investigation. Keep it cute. Take your ass back to your cubicle, sit, and just do your job until we follow up with you. That's it. That's not what happens on reality TV. What happens on reality TV is you have that bad moment, you go and you talk about it to everybody, okay? And they are, of course, they are going to share their story and say, I need you to feel what I feel, child. Who's my, whatever name they're going to call you. Uh, who's my tea drops? Who's my boopies? Who's whoever the name is? All of a sudden, you got this cute little name because you're a supporter. And now you are helping them become wealthy because a show like Married to Medicine or RHOP, um, those shows are well-formed shows. They have a system. They've been on for a while and they're already a part of a franchise and a big, big, okay, network. That means that's not a first season. You're getting about a $20,000 check, $15,000 check for 12 weeks. They're getting a lot more than that a lot more than that. And then after those 12 weeks, they get an opportunity to work their real job, whatever that happens to be, and their businesses. You have a hard time at work. You got to go home after your 8, 10, 12 hour day, cook dinner for your kids or figure out how to handle your kids and then spend some time with you. You rarely have time to wipe your bottom, let alone figure out a nice t-shirt line or whatever it is you're selling to whomever, because you're not doing it. And that's how they make it. You might want to quit your job. So now you got to comb through the one ads <laughs> to figure out where you can work next. That's it. That's it. So keep that in mind, child. Take your mind back for 2024. Take your mind back. That, that's, that needs to be the motto. Okay. 795 of y'all are watching. Make sure you hit the like button, please. And thank you. Um, he needed security because of Monique. Who? Giselle said that she needed security because of Monique. Uh, she wanted to act like she was, mm -hmm, I do remember that she was acting like she was dangerous, but she and Robin showed up at the Aussie rest restaurant to bother Ashley and Monique. If you remember, uh, Robin was very good for using her size to intimidate people. Um, beautiful woman, but she knew how to, you know, buck up on somebody and she did it quite a bit. Um, I saw it a few times and every time it was about somebody talking about that damn loser ass Juan. Okay. Um, who else are we talking about? But anyway, that's what these two ladies are saying. Let's just to wrap it up. Giselle and NECA are saying that they are receiving death threats and that they didn't realize things were going to be so bad. And I just want to say... Um, we all know that um, Candace is not going to be there next season. Giselle did not quit. She will definitely be there next season. However, um, I'm hoping that NECA is, um, I, I hope that we get a better season out of her if she does return, if they give her an opportunity to return. I'll just say that. Because um, I, don't, I don't see anything that she 
that would have brought that to her, unless it was maybe coming from uh, the Nigerian community. I don't know. I thought that, um, I thought her and Wendy went at it, but you know, it was what it was. Um, Giselle needed security because she pushed Monique to get that fight started. That was a bad scene. That was a bad scene for sure. Um, let's see that bother one. I don't like Robin. Yeah. Robin is an acquired taste for sure. Um, it's N N E K A. She's coming out with a sparkling. Oh, see, Sonia. Thank you. The second she said it, I went, what is she selling us? What is she selling us? I just want to know before I even get into this story, because I feel like this is a money grab. And like I said, if you're going to be on reality TV, this is what you're here for. You are here to stack racks, period, period. There is no reason for you to ever tell the most humiliating, crazy stories about yourself unless you are stacking racks. So all of the other stuff that happens that just that's hard for the course. You have to be, make sure that you um, are understanding though. Um, sometimes people are taking us for a ride and it ain't it ain't right. Okay. Um, I'm tired of the old reality TV. We are grown now. We have evolved. We need to do something new like Sharnita's world. Well, that is an option. I think that there's room for both. Sharnita's world is out there. Um, who else did I, I used to recommend this show to you guys all the time. Um, what is that show called? It's actually a business show. Rashida, it's Rashida, making money with Rashida or something like that. And she literally talks to business owners and get the, you know, all the points of what you need to do, whether it's restaurant industry, clothing, makeup, all kinds of industries, um, often women. And she is talking to them about what it took for them to turn their businesses into, you know, multi-million dollar corporations. It is a good show. Boss Chick with Rashida, I think it's called. Um, anyway, it's had two or three seasons already. I've watched all of them. It's not a show that you can review because there's not drama in it. But if people are looking to just, you know, be inspired by Black women, because that's who she talks to, Black women about business, that's one way to go. Um, black women are doing it big big, more than we ever have in the last 10 years. All you have to do is Google it. You will see it. But sometimes we expect everything to run through TV or social media. And that's not the case. Just Google it if that's what you're interested in. It'll come up. You can also follow me on my uh, Facebook group. I always talk about Black women who are doing amazing things. I love it. I love it. It um, inspires me every morning to look up stuff. I will just, I swear to God, I will just Google um, top 10, um, you know, most successful black women in the world or in the United States or in a specific industry like cooking, um, whatever, you know what I'm saying? The grocery store business, where are these people? What do they look like? How could I model some of the things they've been doing? Um, how can I work it? You know what I'm saying? They're, they're out there. They talk about it all the time all the time. So um, thank you, Simone. They are, they really are. Um, and I don't, I, I hate when we say, because we saw a crazy moment on reality television, um, that it, it puts a black eye on everything. Because again, black women have literally, we are outdoing ourselves right now. We are outdoing black men right now. We are outdoing the United, people in the United States right now, the number one in the industry, even in the military. Black women is the fastest growing number. Like, think about it. It is it, reality TV isn't holding us back. I guess that's the best way to put it. It's not holding us back. It's never held us back. We've always made a way. And I just think that we we just gotta focus more on the positives. Just look it up. Just look it up. Social media is for gossip and entertainment and a good time. So they're not gonna always feed us those stories. So we just have to be proactive about it. Um, uh, we are, I just wish that they would show that. We just be proactive about it. They're there. They're, they've never stopped. We've never stopped ever, ever. Uh, I have a cousin that does that every day at, yes, ma'am. Every, every morning it is a part of my meditation, child. I swear to God, sit, <laughs> think, what do I need to do today? Who do I need to be inspired by? I love it. It gives me chills 
to think about what we're doing and the young people. Damn. <sighs> Sometimes I want to roll back the hands, okay? <laughs> 630 of you are um, in the chat, or 630 of you have hit the like button. Make sure that you, uh, the rest of you hit that like button as well. And thank you, Linda, for posting that. Okay, that's it. That's all I want to say. Now let's talk about um, these folks right here, okay? Uh, this is Real Housewives of Potomac, baby. I had a couple of things that I wanted to say about that damn reunion the other night. Um, I really did like the reunion, actually. Let me make sure I talked about all my topics. I did. I really did like the reunion. I did. I like the reunion. Um, and I wanted to chit chat with y'all about it. I only got a couple of talking points before I move on. Number one, I like the fact that they were giving us the uncensored version of the reunion. So they were letting all the F words and S words and you know what words, they let all of those fly, even in the... Um, even in the in the flashback scene. So they gave it raw on every single scene and I liked it. I also liked that out the gate, Andy checked Robin and Ashley. <laughs> he did not leave any crumbs. He was, you know, as nice as he could about it. But when he went through and started asking them during the greeting, how are you? What's, what's you up to? Um, basically he asked um, Mia, are you and Gordon, I know y'all are getting a divorce and things like that, but I've been watching you on social media. It looks like you've moved on with ink and she was very forthcoming. Uh, right now, she's, she's the queen of Potomac. Everybody on that show has gotten away for years with telling the very minutest part of their lives and then turning it into these big, crazy scenes. And right now, they have to deal with Mia, period. Mia is letting it know people know this is where I'm at. Um, did I watch Summer House? I am watching Summer House right now. I am catching up on it. So I will definitely talk about it, child. Yes, ma'am. I, I like that show too. But anyway, the one thing that he said that I was like interested in was he told Ashley after saying, how are things with you and Michael? Are y'all divorced yet? And she was like, well, there's movement. We're not divorced, but there's movement. He didn't even say, what's the movement? You know why? Because he knew she was lying. And he said, you're reminding me a lot of Robin. When Robin used to sit up here on this reunion stage season after season and couldn't give me a date for when her and Juan were going to get married. And now you're doing the same shit with you and Michael, which tells me that you're trying to play me. You're getting this fat check to lie, period. She should have also quit or be fired. So we're going to see what's going to happen with that. Um, let's see. When I think back to my ancestors, which have been strong women, I know no other way to be 100%. I say this all the time. I will stand on it. I would die on it. Black people, I know people like to say we're lazy and all this other shit. Never in history. <laughs> Never in history. Okay. Um, you have a group of people or small groups of people that everybody wants to put everything mm -hmm. on. That's just never been us. We figure it out. We make a way. We always have. We always will. Breathe that life into people. They're not going to get divorced. And that's exactly what we know. Ashley and Michael will never get divorced. They are playing in our faces. Have been, always has been, okay? Um, Michael just doesn't want to be on the show. And you could see Ashley's face break, her and Robin, when um, when Andy said that. He was like, mm. Something tells me you're a liar. In, in other words, something tells me you're lying. I'm getting the same impression. Both Robin and Ashley knew they got hit. Okay. And the other thing that he asked at, um, Robin was, have you opened the spa yet? Right. That was a part of her storyline. She should have had that spa up and running. And she said, no, not yet. Well, now both you and Juan are unemployed. There's no checks coming in on that house. I Googled, is the spa open? And it is not open yet. Um, they said it still had a couple of months to go. And that's a shame. That is a shame. Okay. So child, that was a problem. Was Gizzer added to the checklist? No, unfortunately he didn't check her. He did ask them. He told them that they, he thought they had a horrible season, um, that this season that they used to be a, a group that would stay together and knew how to work things out. And he said, uh, this was a disappointment for him. And I thought that that was interesting. Um, Ashley should be fired for setting up the fight between Deborah and Candace. She should be fired for that. I also think that what Ashley and Giselle does off season, because Giselle tries to produce stories, 
what what I got mad at about um, Andy is that he ignored the fact that Robin did keep the story about Juan cheating away from the show. She had already come out and said that every one of the bloggers had been contacted and everyone on the cast had been contacted about the story. She had talked to everybody and except for except for Karen. She talked to everybody except for Karen and they had all agreed not to talk about it. What she did with Karen is brought Sharice on so that Sharice could say that Karen was sucking a, in the bathroom of a waiter or, or one of the staff at a restaurant. She tried to intimidate Karen and shut her up by bringing on Sharice. And she then she said, well, I thought Karen would bring it up. Karen's like, why would I fucking bring it up? That's not my story. That's your story. Um, but but Andy was not quick enough. I know he had something in his ear and because he, he was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm being told that you do. You know, I think he was talking to um, he was talking to um, Giselle when Giselle was trying to deny saying that that Chris forced her into the bedroom. You forced me. You made me go. And then he said, my producers are telling me that's not true. My producers are telling me that's not true. But he did not hold Robin's feet to the fire. But either way, at the end of it, Robin ends up saying what she should have said at the very first episode. Me and Juan have been together for 26 years. We're not breaking up. I don't give a damn what that man does. We have been through a whole lot of things as a married couple for 26 years. And you guys are asking me to destroy my family because you heard X, Y, and Z about some chick in Canada. She's back in Canada. Juan's at home. He ain't going nowhere. He ain't got no place to go. Okay. And we are going to thug it out. And that's all she had to say from the beginning period. <laughs> That's all she had to say from the beginning, but she gets so tongue tied and flustered when people come after her about Juan. And really, I think it's because she's afraid of what Juan's going to say. He even asked her if Juan had watched the season. Did Juan watch any of the season? She said, no, no, right away. But Juan did not show up on the reunion. He was not sitting beside her, beside, behind her. He declined to be there. He declined to be there. Robin should just be a man of her. <laughs> Cookie, time out for you. <laughs> time out, Cookie. That's not good. Oh, God. So Cookie's falling into the, the Robert. Robert should have just been a man about it. Okay, child. Y'all are hilarious. Um, do you think that RHOP passed on Love and Marriage DC? Uh, the Silvas and Tylers. Ashley is a mean girl, but she tells the truth. Ashley is a mean girl. Um, Candace, Candace is a mean girl, Giselle and Robin, they can all be mean girls, child. But what I do like about them in particular is that Candace can get over things very quickly. Um, and she's very smart. She's very articulate. So I like it. I like her. Okay. Um, you know, to a degree, Michael was a, a lot to take mainly because I, I couldn't take all the all the excuses that she would do. But when she realized that her back was against the wall, she would just say it. She would just say it. Oh, so we did it. So what? Um, Candace, she was a little different. Um, but I will say that uh, Ashley and Giselle, they will off show, think of things to say and do to bring to the show. Even if it's a lie, they will make up stories and then use that the entire season. And that was another thing that I really didn't like. Um, when they were talking about Chris and Candace said, you accused him of sexual assault. No, she didn't say the word sexual assault. She said, he made me go into a room. But what they failed to realize is it wasn't just Giselle. Giselle started it. Then Ashley piled onto it by saying, well, he asked me to come to a hotel at three in the morning. He sent me a message on uh, IG. I was out with my friend and she was sitting there smiling and nodding her head. And she, remember that? Candace sat there and smiled at her, nodded her head. She said, he works at the hotel. He manages the, um, the club upstairs. And that's what he was asking. If you could come up and show your face as a local celebrity. And she went, oh, I didn't know. And then she brought on her Muppet face and friend. Deborah, who also piled onto it. Oh, he was staring at me, child, and I, I, I felt uncomfortable. So y'all made him out to be a sleaze bucket who, you know, 
could be over in a corner lurking while his pants were down. So don't say you didn't do that. Giselle did call him a sneaky link. There was a lot going on that, that season and they really just tried to keep it about Giselle and, um, and Candace, but that's not how it happened. There was a whole lot that was added on to it. And I feel like they gaslighted her and made it seem like it was just this little thing and you just blew it out of proportion. That's not what happened. I don't like that. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody said Roberto is a is one handsome lady. Oh gosh, you guys kill me. Uh, what's the female version of a beard? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Ciao. I don't know what a female version of a beard is. I think you're a beard no matter what, right? You're you're a beard no matter what. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Linda said Sherelle got to go in timeout too. What are y'all over there doing? Um, Juan said, if it wasn't for the kids, he would have been gone in season three. Facts. Hot mic. Hot mic moment. Robin was sitting there talking to, to Juan. Juan got up and said, Robin, I got to go. Then he was taken off the mic before he even got to that little supply closet. And the producer or whoever was in there said, what's going on? Are, are you happy? No, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. I, I just, I just want to, you know, if it wasn't for my kids, I wouldn't even be here. Okay. I want something more. We all heard it, child, and no, there was no follow up on it. In fact, the only reason why Robin stayed in the seat as long as she did is because they were really looking for her and Juan to go at it. They were looking for something between her and Juan, but her and Juan didn't give us anything. It's always offline. Robin should have been fired the second she put all of that stuff behind a paywall instead of bringing it to the show. Okay. You want to get on there with Giselle and act like you're all big and bad and talking about it, but it, it is what it is. Okay. Um, yes. Muppet face. That's correct. Okay. Um, she needed, she, she definitely had a Muppet face and that shit she did with starting that fight was crazy. Um, let's see. Right. That was so wrong. Shaking my head. I stopped watching at that point. These women are Delulu and will damage anyone's rep. Okay, child. Um, I'm assuming you're talking about all the ladies piling up on, on Chris. Juan doesn't want to pay child support. That's why he stays. Well, he don't have a job no damn way. I don't think she would take him to court for child support. Candace grew on me. And I mean, think about this. They, were, they weren't even married. They had spent like a good seven, eight years of their life. It felt like that anyway, pretty much the entire show. Because her and Juan come on the show divorced or about to divorce. So they spent pretty much every season of this show outside of this one unmarried. So there's that. Um, let's see. Uh, that's another reason why Jizzy and Ashley need to be fired. Uh, the salacious lies they come up with in their storyline. They do come up with salacious lies. That was the problem with Monique. They had that table discussion. Someone taped it. They released it to the internet. You can hear them all giggling saying, let's say that uh, Monique's uh, baby, her newborn baby, um, belonged to the trainer and that it wasn't Chris's. And then someone said, but he looks exactly like Chris. That's not going to work. He looks exactly like Chris. That's not going to work. And they protected Giselle and they didn't play that audio. They made it seem like it was something else. They do that a lot. I don't like that. Um, the female version of a beard is a mustache. Holy camole. Um, what else happened? Uh, let's see. When I saw Muppet face, I said, no way. How would she know if anybody's staring at her? Shut up. She said, I will wait. Ciao. Uh, it was a moment. I think the funniest part about her even saying that is that the camera people ran the tape back. Production ran the tape back. And when they did, Chris was looking at the ceiling, at the floor, at the countertop. He might have even uh, filed his nails, but he damn sure wasn't looking in her direction. That was some crazy mess. That was some crazy mess. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. That was that was the gist of it. Then we're going to see next week Miss Mia and her husband, Gordon, or a strange husband, Gordon, who, by the way, is going to move across the street from her. She said that he has a part, uh, apartment someplace else right now, but he's going to move into a condo across the street from her, maybe for the children. But she is in a full-fledged relationship with Inc., who she says, I love you too, FaceTimes with, with Gordon behind her. Hey, what's up, man? Why your new, your wife's new man is in the phone on FaceTime? Ciao, bye.
I ain't never seen no mess like that in my life. Woo child. That was crazy to me. But uh, yeah, we, we get to see what's going to happen there and what he's going to say. And then to find out that Ink thinks that her son is his and not Gordon's and that he showed up at the house and demanded that she gives him the boy. That was crazy. Ink looks exactly like Gordon. Cookie, thank you, honey. I said that too. The day that picture dropped of Ink, I said he looks like Gordon, a younger version of Gordon with hair. They have the same cheeks, the, the nose shape, everything. I said, Mia has a type, boo. She has a type. Let's see. I know he goes with Africa. I'm trying to colonize people, but we're still in Africa. Are you talking, Essie, are you talking about Michael? Because I know that he has some dealings in Africa, child. Something with that to do with oil or something that he's doing over there. Um, and it's it's pretty bad, it sounds like. But he got some investments there. Um, that was something I was shocked about in that relationship. I'm assuming you're talking about Mia and Gordon. Yeah, me and Gordon right now, they are telling everything. They are being as open as possible. I don't think we've had this kind of honesty ever on this show. Maybe in the first couple of seasons with with uh, Giselle, because none of her, uh, her none of her relationships worked out, so she seemed to be okay. But right now, mm -mm, it ain't happening, and they can't all make me a story their story. She might. Mia said that after Gordon lost his job, it was her paycheck on Potomac that was paying for her house and Gordon. She said that he um, got an allowance from her and she's only been on the season on the show for three years. That tells you how much money she's making her own damn condo, fully furnished him. He has a house. Um, she's paying for her kids to go to private school. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Uh, let's see. Children should be off limits. In my opinion, who are you referring to when you say that uh, Miss Bliss? Mia stole the show last episode, and I haven't watched the reunion yet. She absolutely stole the show. She absolutely stole the show. I am, I'm in awe of Mia, I have to say. When women are able to say, you know what? This is just how I feel. Don't be, don't be mad at me. When women are able to say, this is what I want. <laughs> I'm going to do it <laughs> no matter what. I'm not, because we are taught to stay unhappy. We are taught to do a certain thing until whatever the kids grow up, whatever. I need you to sacrifice every dream you ever have until this happens. And then by that time, all your Zaza zoo is gone. You know what I'm saying? But Mia said, F that. Okay. I, the, the time is now <laughs> I am getting with the man that I really love. I am on this TV show. I am making my own money. And if all I have to do is tell, then I'll tell, I don't give a damn. I'll sacrifice Gordon. Okay. Uh, Mia's children's son. Okay. So you're saying that their children are off limits to them because they're the one telling the story though. They're the one telling the story. I don't think anybody else is saying it as of now. Gordon actually said it in episode eight that he didn't, he first, he said something about them being around his kids. And then he said, who is the father? You don't even know who the father is. And she said, Gordon, that's unfair. So he started that conversation and then he went around and started telling it to all the castmates before the show came back on. And then we hear um, Wendy say on stage, <laughs> then we hear uh, Wendy say on stage, I don't know what's going on, but he said this happened, right? He said that Ink came to your house and demanded that your son come. So it was probably something he was going to tell anyway, because according to Andy, it was a, it's going to be a jaw-dropping moment when Gordon comes on stage in the next episode. He said, the things that was revealed, I had no idea. So we have to see what, exactly what they revealed, y'all. But they made it seem like the shit was going to be off the chain. So we're going to see. We're going to see. Uh, let's see. Uh, they are Bravo pays more than own. Uh, Bravo does pay more than own. You're right. That's what I said. Bravo pays more than own. All of those shows are well formulated. These are not shows. The new girls that are coming on, these are not shows that uh, has a first season cast. These are cast members that's been on for 10, 11, 12 more years. So you're getting a cute check when you walk on. It may not be as cute as everybody else, but it's cute. Okay. It's very cute. 
Um, so that's why I say it when we're hearing these stories now, we, we also need to just keep in mind, this isn't a first season show. Um, and I, that's why I'm not talking about male male walked onto a show for the first season. Are we going to get picked up? Are we going to get picked back up? Are we going to get picked back up? Right. So, and then also she was living her life out loud. The things that was happening to her, we were seeing go down in real time. So that's not the same as someone who says, I'm going to sign on to the show knowing that this, this is what's going on. And if you don't know that's what's going on, all you have to do is pick up your, your remote and turn on the TV. Um, if someone tells you you're going to work at the zoo, you want to know if you're going to be shoveling elephant shit or if you're going to be feeding the monkeys or whatever. Find out. Find out. It's not a secret. Okay. So anywho, y'all, we've been on for a while. That was pretty much it. I think the only other thing that I wanted to say was Ashley talking about she holds, this is gross, but she holds Michael's jizz in her mouth until he falls asleep. That was disgusting. And then she had the nerve to tell Andy, who is homosexual, how to do it. And I was like, you so dumb right now that you don't even know who you're talking to. Like, what is going on? She is crazy. Um, let's see. Anywhere but the cat house at the zoo house. Chow, what, listen, if you come onto a show like Bravo, if you come onto a platform like Bravo, all you got to do is watch the old episodes. Um, if you don't, you know what I'm saying? Get your money, boo. But everybody need to get their check. Get the cute check that's paid after your 12 weeks and then go on ahead and make them businesses so you can get the rest of them checks. That's what I say. But um, yeah. Anywho, that's it, y'all. I love y'all. Thank y'all for uh, coming on and hanging out with me on this uh, Tuesday night. I'm going to get off because it sounds like it's raining kind of hard outside for me. Um, I don't know if y'all live in the Atlanta area, but it is raining cats and dogs out here. Um, but we'll talk about um, what's going on with them again next week, child. Uh, thank you to all of my moderators. And Hook Cookie, I'm sorry that you weren't able to hook people up today, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to look it up and find out how to get this corrected, okay? Um, let's see, Rose. Rose, you hear the thunderstorms out there? They said that we got um, some uh, treacherous weather coming, so... Uh, we have to get that figured out. Um, so yeah, outside of that, thank you to everyone who joined me tonight. Everybody who joined me tonight. All of the mods, thank y'all for hanging out with me on a Tuesday night, on a school night. Okay. And I will check you all on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.